the science of accomplishments. The science of accomplishments. And one of the things we must understand in life is that we have been brought to the earth to make a mark, to make an impact, to contribute our own quarter to mankind, to humanity. The Bible is speaking in Acts chapter 13. He said how that after David had served his generation, he rested in God. After that, he had served his, his generation. He rested in God. So Christianity is not a call to be what? Stupid. The cross is a plus sign. So it's a call to a life of addition. Everything about our life should be profitable. Both to God and both to men. So that's one way you judge success. Your profitability to humanity and to God. Not just by maybe the kind of clothes you put in. How you change your levels of clothing or shoes or, or your, your cars from one level to another. No! Your level of what? Profitability to mankind and to God. So you must wake up each day and ask yourself, what is my own contribution? Because God saw a need on the earth. He knows that he wants a man to fulfill and then he brought you. No wonder in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7, Jesus said, Lo, I come in the volume of what? Books that were written concerning me. Paul said in 1 um, and 1 Timothy chapter 4, no, 2 Timothy 4 verse 7, he said that I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. So before every man, there is a syllabus for his life. Some of you are still in the hundred level of your life. You've not done any course. You are even carrying some over. Some of you think you only carry courses over in school. No, you even in life, you carry courses over. Because your life is like a syllabus which you are supposed to live out each day. Do you understand that? That's why the Bible says that um, we've been commissioned. We are joint heirs with Christ. What it means is, when you say commission, it means commission. It means God had a mission to accomplish on earth. And because the heavens of the heavens belong to God and the earth he has given to the sons of men. So he looked for a mortal man and then he what? Commissioned him. What does it mean? Join me and achieve this mission because only you is permitted to operate in this jurisdiction. So that man must live with that sense of purpose and destiny each day of his life. Knowing fully well that I have not been called into the earth to mark time. I have not been called to get good clothes, you know, build good houses and the rest of them. I have been born for what? A reason. Do you understand that? You must wake up each day with that. Because when you don't put this at the back of your mind, all that you will think as an accomplishment is that what? Material possessions. And that's why, you know, especially in the template of Africa and Nigerian specificity, that we have made success to be defined based on materialism. So when we look at what a man has as possessions, then we call such a man a successful man. But scripture tells us something. He said, Jesus said to a man who came to him and said, please settle an issue between me and my brother. My dad is late and I want you to settle our inheritance. We are dragging on this matter. And Jesus looked at him and said, the life of a man does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. The life of a man does not consist in the abundance of things that he what he possesses. Everything you gather materially on this earth ends with the earth. But the Bible tells us something in Revelation 14, 13. He said that how glorious it is now when the saints die. For they die what? In the Lord. And their works go with them. Do you understand that? So you carry basically, that's why the Bible says in um, Revelation 20, it said, and we saw books that were opened. I told you, it's not just the book of life we have. The book of life is the least book to be concerned about. <laughs> what did I say? The book of life is the least book. I know you've heard many wonderful songs. Don't worry. Light is coming to the body of Christ each day of our life. The Bible says, and I saw one book was opened, which was the book of life, and many other books. Do you understand that? When you read, when you read, is it, a, is it Job now? It talks about the book of Jasper, the book of works. The book of alignment is a scripture. That's why Jesus even told them. He said, you will say that certain people did miracles in my name. He said, but I will tell them, get out. You did not do the will. So they did those things, but they were not in alignment. They were not sent to do it. Do you understand that? Intimacy with God brings you to increased levels of discipline. Because what you will do in the outer court, when you try it in the inner court, you can die. Now, what you can even do in the inner court, when you get to the holies of holies, they have to tie you rope. <laughs> Are we following? Because sometimes you know your offense instantaneously. So intimacy with God brings you into a life of restriction and more levels of what? 
discipline, the more constrained your life becomes. So understand each day of your life that you are born for what? A reason. There is something God brought you to the earth to do. And that must hit you every day you wake up. Else you will live your life pursuing after things that does not matter. But pursuing after things that are wakeless before the face of eternity. I've seen the great fall and I've seen the great rise. I've seen great men live long and I've seen many die. And most of the times I ask myself, to what end? Last week, or this week rather, we lost a great man, Femi Oshibona, the owner of the 21-story building. He's gone. I, I tried to watch some of his clips and I saw his motivational speaking. And I told my wife, I thought, these are useless now. I give you two weeks, you forget that such a man lived. That's the pain of life. That's why if you have a sense of an understanding of life, you will change the way you live your life. Are we together? You will change and stop pursuing after things that only matters on the earth. And look for what? Divine accomplishment. Things that hold weights beyond this life. I mean beyond what? The life after here. Do we understand that? And you know the good thing about it? As you try to accomplish success that are eternal, even success that are ephemeral or just instantaneous comes to you. Are we together? They still come. I've not seen any man that followed after God and did great things for the kingdom that ended the poor man. I've seen governors that are walking through the street and passing and nobody recognized that they were once a governor. Seen them great men pass through the area. But I've not seen a man that served God faithfully and died without being what? A global recognized figure. The signs of what? Accomplishment. Number one, if we can't finish today, We'll continue next Sunday. Number one, Daniel chapter 9, verse 1 to 2. Daniel chapter 9, verse 1 to 2. He said, It was the first year of the reign of Darius the Meda, the son of Ahasuerus, who became the king of the Babylonians. Two, during the first of year of his reign, I, Daniel, was studying the writings of the prophets, and I learned from the word of the Lord, as recorded by the prophet Jeremiah, that Jerusalem must lie desolate for 70 years. The first science for accomplishment is a tireless hunt for information. But adventure, the reason for your continued captivity is that you lack what? An understanding. He knew that the reason that this, these guys are not supposed to remain in captivity. Jerusalem is not supposed to remain in bondage. So he gave himself to what? Reading and studying. Looking for information, studying, looking for information that had the ability to liberate him from that word captivity. The reason why you are suffering might be there is something you need to know that you don't know. Are we following? The reason why you are where you, you are in life might be that there is something you need to have an information about that you don't know. You know, sometimes life could be so easy, but men make it complex by ignorance. Very simple thing. Sometimes you feel if a man just knows, it liberates him completely. But the Bible says they know not, neither do they understand. So they will die like men. men. Where there is the absence of knowledge and understanding, men experience death. Men, that's why the Bible says they that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. Daniel 11.32. So knowledge is the product or is the sponsor for exploit and strength in life. Knowledge is the sponsor for exploit and strength in life. Give yourself to reading. Give yourself to reading. <laughs> you came to school just to be a certified engineer. You stay for five years, even though you have baked, and then nothing about life you know. The Bible speaking in Matthew chapter 12, verse 3 to 5, the Bible says, And while Jesus from verse 1 and 2 was walking through a cornfield on the Sabbath day with his disciples, they began to pluck because they were hungry, and they began to eat. And certain Pharisees that were far to see, and certain Pharisees that were sad to see, came to them and said, Why do your servant do these things on what? The Sabbath, verse 3. Jesus said to them, have you not read what David did when he was hungry with his men? How he went to the temple and partook of the shield. He went for that. He said, have you not even read in verse 5 about the priest? How they profane the Sabbath and are blameless. It means those guys will remain hungry because they lack an information. What made Jesus knew how to satisfy his hunger? What an information he has. That a man can do that and be blameless. But they didn't know. Nobody thought. That's why he was asking them, have you not read? Please, is not everything the Holy Ghost will tell you. Give yourself to what? Reading. What he has impacted in some men to put in books, put in tapes, he will not reveal to you again. He expects you. The Bible says in Proverbs, uh, I think 25 verse 2, he said, It is the glory of God to conceal matters, but the honor of kings to search them. So one attribute of 
how you can locate and identify kings is that they give themselves to searching. That's one way I know a great man. His ability to delve into secrets. Come, come see me when I'm looking for an information. I can sit at that spot for 24 hours searching for a truth. Because I know the truth you know is what sets you free. Are we together? Give yourself to read it. Matthew chapter 19 and verse 4. The Bible says, and they came to Jesus and said, if Moses told us that if your wife gives you a kind of um, a, an attitude, you have the right to give her a letter of divorce. And Jesus said to them, have you not read? So it means the first principle of marriage is you read first. He didn't tell them, have you not prayed? Have you not located her? He said what? Read. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh or blood, nor against powers or principalities in what? High places. The word there, powers, or rulers of darkness rather, the word darkness there is not black, is not night. It's the Greek word for ignorance. So it means they come to rule in an absence of knowledge. Those kind of demons operate when they know you don't have what? An information. So he calls them the rulers of of darkness. That's why you can see an anointed pastor still beating his wife. When they see he doesn't have an information of how to manage marriage and understand that the Bible says he should dwell with them in understanding, then they take an advantage of him. Then when he's done with that, he begins to cry. I don't know why I did that. Demons are taking an advantage of your ignorance. And most of the times ignorance is not the absence of truth, but that you ignored it. Are we together? Give yourself. Have you not read? This is Jesus asking people. I thought you would have asked them, have the Holy Ghost not come upon you to inspire you? But he asked them, have you not read? So if Jesus expects you to read, it means there is much profit to your life when you give yourself to reading. So much of information out there. But men are so lazy. That's why they tell you when you want to finish an African man, put that information in a book. He will remain where he is the rest of his life because of the laziness. See, there is no anointing for reading book. You take responsibility when you know what you want your life to become. Do you understand that? There is no anointing for reading books. You take responsibility when you know what you want your life to become. Take responsibility. Matthew 22 verse 31. They approached Jesus in verse 30. I said to him, Matthew 22, 30, 31. They said, Master, a man had one wife, right? Died, she died. He married again. Had like five in heaven. Who will be the husband? And Jesus asked them, have you not read concerning the resurrection of the dead? That in there, no one marries. So the reason for such oppression of foolishness in the form of a question is because a man chose not to read. Give yourself to reading. In Acts chapter two, 1, from verse 17 to 31. Acts chapter 1, verse 17 to 31. The Bible says, and Jesus promised, uh, all right, in that, and um, verse 8, and that go to the upper room, that the Holy Ghost will come upon you and you shall become what? Witness. To Jerusalem, so I say one of the proof of the Holy Ghost is motion. It moves you. You shall become what? Witness. Are, are we following? And then the Bible says 120 of them in verse 16, 17 was gathered in the upper room praying. Remember, Jesus never gave them a date and said it will happen after 10 days. There was no instruction from scriptures like that. But they were praying and the Holy Ghost never came. Verse 17, Peter stood up. Saw them praying. I assume that Peter just left them and said, Ah, a man will pray so long in the midst of ignorance. Mm -hmm. So one thing prayer does is to open your eyes. John Wesley said, It is good to pray. But only if we remain there. So after you pray and you are inspired by the Holy Ghost, get out. Go do something. Jesus did not stay all his life in the place of prayer. After he prayed and God came upon him, he was filled with the power of the Spirit. He went out. The Bible said, doing good. So Christianity does not make you stupid. It is no reduction. Redemption is no reduction. It's a life of addition. It's just for you to understand how things work, how results are produced. How results are produced. Make up your mind. I won't finish my destiny because of a lack of information. That's why I see God is always concerned. We'll get back to that book of Acts. God is always concerned about your source of information. Because most of the times, what you know in life, combined with who you know, makes you. That's why in Genesis chapter 3, the Bible says after that they've eaten of that fruit, right, of the tree, they've partook of that fruit. Look at what he asked them when he came to the garden. Adam, where are you? And what did Adam say? I'm hiding because I am what? Naked. Do you know he never said anything about the apple? Go read all through your scriptures. His major concern was who told you? Who what? Told you. Who are you now listening to? Who is now your source of information? That was his concern. Who told you? So in verse 17 of Acts chapter 1, the Bible says, And Peter stood up, having read, and said to them, That it is written in scriptures, that one among the twelve, 
we betray him, the son of perdition. He said, another must take his place. As long as we are 11, the Holy Ghost cannot come. Not because God wants it to be 10 days. He said, so, men, we have to appoint one now. Even if we cannot choose by the leading of the Spirit, let's cast lots. See, there is something about patterns in scriptures that has the ability to, when you form them, they trap spirits. There are things you do by what was the technology in Numbers chapter 23 and 24 that Balaam knew and he said, put for, um, um, is it seven now? Seven others face the east, face the west, and face. What is it in you? That's what you now understand when the Bible says in Psalm 75 that promotion comes not from the west, not from the east, not from the south. No, not. They brought two men, I think Barnabas or so, and um, Matthias, and they did. A lot, and a lot fell on what? Matthias. The Bible says in chapter 2, and suddenly there was a mighty rushing wind. Why? That guy gave himself to what? Reading. Revelation is the liberation of men. Revelation is the liberation of men. Truth sets men free. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 8, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the what? Life. When you encounter him, he gives you what? Truth that naturally produces what? By truth, you get life. Give yourself to redeem. Tirelessly hunt for what? Information. How to prosper is known. Men have chosen not to search it out. In the midst of every complaint, there are those not complaining. Are we following? It doesn't matter how the economy of a nation is. There are many not participating. People are still building houses. Though. <laughs> People are still, are still spending like Bari is not the president. Not everyone struggling. No, these are no peace. Not everyone is what? Struggling. So don't think that the heat is being felt by everybody. There are some that have touched that mystery of exemption. How that they can play by a different set of rules. Are we together? Give yourself tirelessly. Horns for information. Information. <laughs> you know, Peter was so smart. He will have as well gathered with them and be praying. Are we following? Because that's why I said that your sensitivity in the place of prayer is more important than the prayer itself. People just get to a point where they hold on to a form of godliness. The Bible says, but denying the true power. We, we just finished that. As, as tried to bear. They hold on to the form of godliness. That's why the Bible says that in that day, either though you have asked anything, John 16, 23, 24, either though you have asked anything, but in that day you will ask anything in my name. And I will do it that your joy may be what? Food. So our answers must bring what? What? Joy. Not the discipline of prayer. We must derive joy from the answers of prayer. Not the discipline of prayer. But that's what we hold on to. That form of godliness. I just pray seven days. What did you get out of it? I'm not trying to downplay prayer. I'm very sure I can say like, I pray more than you all. I don't know if I've closed my eyes for the first five nights. Are we together? So I pray. But in that prayer, my eyes are what? Opened. My ears are alert. That's why the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, that when you come into his house, which is also a place of prayer, that you should be more apt to hear than to speak. It says so that you will not offer the sacrifices of fools. Be more apt to hear. Put sensitivity to hear what he has to say. That he will begin to open your eyes. Even all those things you've read in the place of prayer, he begin to print them in the imaginations of your heart, your image center. You begin to put them like thoughts on the screens of your heart. They begin to pop up. You just find that suddenly thoughts are dropping on you. Ideas are dropping on you as you are. Do we understand that? Give yourself to information on you. Tirelessly. I said, paraventure, the reason for your captivity is that you have not read something. Are we following? That area, that's the way I live my life. When I'm stranded of something, ask my children, I tell them, there's something I need to know. No, that's the truth. What you don't know is your superior. There is something I need to watch. It doesn't matter how um, technologized a door was designed. It doesn't matter the computer programming to which it was used to lock it. Once it sees the right key, it doesn't matter. See, this door, you know, it was made from Israel. You see, they, 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 they did this, they did once it most of the times those giant doors are opened by simple codes or small keys. How many of you know? Have you seen giant doors when you watch movies? Very tiny key opens them. You know, I've told you even in scripture that God solves great problems with small methods. <laughs> 
That's one of the, you see, this is one of the information that has helped me too. So it keeps me relaxed the bigger the problem. But because you don't have the information, you begin to weigh the size of the problem and feel how difficult it will be for God. I found out that when he wanted to feed 5,000 people, the Bible says he used what? Two loaves. When he wanted to, when, when he wanted to feed 4,000, he uses um, five loaves of bread. When he wanted to feed 4,000, he uses, um, wanted to use 5,000, he uses two. I was thinking by mathematical calculation, he should be using more. The greater, the, he kept using less. He solves big problems on small methods. Just to what? Disdain the wise. Are we following? Just to disdain the wise. So that we don't equate him with our problems. Do we understand that? Please give yourself to reading. There are things I've known in this life. They didn't come by the brooding of the Holy Ghost on my head. They came because he steered me up to pick a book. He steered me up to listen to a message, listen to a tape. And the information hit me. I told you I was struggling to read some few days, a few years ago. And one day I was listening to a tape by Mike, Dr. Mike Modoc. Decision decides destiny. Wisdom is the ability to recognize difference. You know that's how he talks. And then he said, I, I, read, I read four books a week and 40 chapters a day of the Bible. I said, man, oh God, <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> Do you guys just lie on the booby to impress people? So I decided to get all these tapes, videos. I said, so I can watch your mood. Maybe if I won't pick it from your voice, I'll pick it from your gestures. And so I was listening to a message he preached in Benny Hill's church. And there he said, he said, I just, you know, I read 40 chapters because of my busy schedules. I just use the audio, audio. I said, ah. I thought it was for deaf, blind people. So they gave them voice. <laughs> Are we following? I said, if you do 40, I do 60. Because I'm not as busy as you are yet. And that's where that vibration came. That's when I knew what they call audio books. That some people can read, some people can hear. Know what works for you. Some people can read, some people prefer to what? To hear. And all of them pick different um, 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 but, um, reception of that truth based on each of these word categories, whether by hearing or by reading. And that was vibration. I told you I was struggling to read a book, <laughs> The Final Conquest. Rick Joyner, if you read this book a lot, you're a powerful man. Struggling, that is, you, 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 as much as I like the angelic. So how many of you know that book I'm talking about? You know how it was? You would just be tired. Because it was looking like everything was in abstract. <laughs> and I just got the audio book of it and read it in one hour. Sat down, they were playing, I was listening. So I, so I can tell you, I've read 10 books of Rick Joyner. <laughs> Truths set men free. Are we following? Delve into revelation. Our revelation breaks you naturally to a realm of faith. What you have seen, you don't struggle to be deaf into secret. Peter was too confident. Why? He has read and read that another must take his place. So the only reason the Holy Ghost will come is that they have to be 12. Remember, he already said to Abraham, by Israel shall my name be called 12. Remember, he read again in 1 Kings and saw when they wanted to produce water, what Elijah did, get me for 12 stones. And when he put the stones, the Bible said the fire came down, signifying the Holy Ghost. He said, men and brethren, you are praying and wasting your time. You will live in this upper room till you become the upper. <laughs> <laughs> there is a way it works. The reason why you should get to the place of prayer and stay there is that you are looking for revelation. You are looking for truths. Please stop making it look like a spiritual activity that makes you useless. That's why many prayer warriors are poor and very oppressed. Sometimes I'm praying for people's situation and... and God just tell me, do this. One time during the lockdown, we were praying in the night, and they sent me a name from Abuja of a man being tormented, right? And I said, give me three days, he will die. I keep him, two of them. Was he dead? Three days. When you know what to do, life becomes very simple. Every way of my life, I'm still struggling, I still lack an information, and I know it very well. And every day of my life, I'm praying, Lord, may I meet this information. It can come in form of a person. I will just say one statement to you. It might come in form of a book. It might be a message you just listen to. Something you hear that just liberates you. But your captivity people, because you have not was studied like Daniel did. Are we following? Give yourself to it. Read. Sometimes 500 naira, you will get a man's 30 years of experience. 500 naira. And I told you the easiest way to learn is from the successes of others and from their failures. One time, great servant of God, our Bishop Ben Sidaosa, took a man to a, a meeting. A young son sat him down. And they were listening to the man of God preaching. And the man of God was preaching rubbish. And the young son got angry and took his Bible and said, Papa, let's live here. He said, my friend, sit down and listen more. How not to be a fool like him? <laughs> you can learn from the failures of others. Are we together? And you can learn from their successes. Don't wait till you have your own experience. It's the worst way to learn. I told you experience is the best teacher, but the worst way to learn. Because sometimes only your dead body that teaches us. Sometimes you even have no lesson to learn again. 
The other one is past. <laughs> Your lesson is for others. The best way to learn is by simple information. You know, I can decide to tell you that this thing hurts when you touch it because it's fire. And you can decide to go and put your hand and you lost one. The two of you still had the lesson now. The fire burns. <laughs> but you know that one is actually the best teacher because it left an impact. <laughs> Which is a testimony for that. I see my hand. Fire truly burns. Number two. The science of accomplishments. The science of accomplishment. Covet the grace and favor of God. A life without grace we just face disgrace. I didn't say at the end you should say so go a or whatever it is. <laughs> And we follow it. Psalm 44 verse. He said, Our fathers from verse 1, our fathers told us that they got not the land. Though they fought, over, but they got not the land by the strength of their hand. Neither did their right hand save them. But because thou hast a favor on them, and thou lifted up the light of what your countenance upon them. That's how they got the land. I thought of last week. They looked after fighting, look at the quality of their weapons. Look at the size of their army and then could conclude that these weapons and this army cannot give us this victory. Yet it means there was an invisible force behind what we are doing. That force that have the ability to at one sling bring down 800 heads. There was an invisible force. Convert the grace and favor of God. Go to places you are man of God. Go and see people praying and fasting that you do. I remember how a young man came to me. I know. I, I keep talking. So I want to know the Bible like you do. So sometimes you see the books I read, I say, carry on it. When you are done, come back. <laughs> then you will know it's not by it. So we have to do it. Are we together? Ecclesiastes 9 verse 11. He said that the race is not for the swiftest, not the battle for the strongest. Good things doesn't happen to those of great intelligence. As powerful as it could be. But it is a function of time and chance. The Bible says time and chance happen next to them. If time happens for you. I said even if the clock in your house choose not to work, it will be ridiculous. Really if time happens for you, time used to happen for men and chance to happen for them when it is created and God decided to make you the figure at that moment when time happens for you. Romans 9 verse 16. He said, so therefore, I haven't said all I said above. That's it. I choose to like Jacob and I choose to hate Esau. The Bible says, knowing fully well that they did not commit any sin. He said, I said that right from their mother's womb. So you know, it was because, you know, the way he lived his life. We'll talk about that. It's good. But there are people that God just chose to show them mercy. That's why pray every day of your life for it. He just chose it. You look at them. You look at certain things about their life. You are wondering why. Lord, why did you choose to bless this one? <laughs> but he just chose you know, anytime I read that um, chapter of the Bible, I don't like reading it because it weakens my emotion. Romans chapter 9, when the Bible will say, it say, it's before they even knew what is called sin, I said it in their mother's womb, that this one would be greater by choice. He said, well, is there unrighteous, unrighteousness with God? God forbid, I choose to have mercy. So it was not a basis, that's what we call election by grace. It was not a basis of any criteria. I've told you, <laughs> convert the grace and the mercy of God upon your life. Are we following? Favor is provoked. Are we together? Mercy has no function. Let me explain what is favor. Favor is that you have done something to please me and I want to change your life. Right? Let me tell you what is mercy. You have done me bad. But I don't know why. I still choose to favor you. <laughs> that's, that's Are we together? So when we raise a prayer, a prayer in, in church and say, Lord, show me mercy. Some people begin to think and say, I'm not a sinner. I've not committed any sin. Let the, the sinful pray, pray for mercy. Say it is not of him. So therefore, that will it or run it out of this God that chose to show us. We can preach any reason for our success, but when we wait before those that do more than us, we know that truly, in the midst of all we did, there was mercy and mercy. You know, when a man is so successful, he talks differently. I told you great people speak differently at seasons. There are seasons of a man's life when he begins to teach on messages like the arrows of discouragement, mm -hmm. the mystery of suffering, <laughs> the baptism of fire, there are, there are levels of life you get to the keys to success. How to become an outstanding figure. Because at that point you are a testimony. <laughs> so listen very well. Learn this principle from me. Great men speak differently in seasons. So it is absolute stupidity on your part to follow a great man at the point you met him without going back to see what he has said before. You miss most of his truths and think he did nothing. He was just moving like that. And that's how the results will come. Go back to his previous sermons. He will tell you his true secrets. The things he did. <laughs> now you can just say, just speak a word. And it's just settled. 
You just believe God. You are believing. <laughs> you know, lay poor men shout more. <laughs> when money comes, it has a way of adjusting your voice. <laughs> Suddenly, it looks like there is a meat on your neck. <laughs> you, just, you just believe God. It's okay. They speak differently at seasons. Are we following? It's a key. Go back to their previous messages. You will get truth. <laughs> Remember we tell you the truth there. Now it's maintenance. It's not maintaining success. <laughs> Are we together? So covet the mercy and the favor of God upon what? Your life. Every day I wake up, Lord, as I go out today, show me mercy. Show me your favor. May people do things for me that they can't explain. For reasons they can't explain. Are we following? Yes, I will live my life good. I will do all. But let people go the way to do things for me that I don't even deserve. Do it for your life. I've seen people with outstanding voices. I remember the last Mimshak convention, Reverend Ken was saying something. He said, he was talking about the Mimshak anointing. And he said, look at Moses, please. Go to the same Christ embassy and look for voices. Just pick them out. Why? Just a song. One song that thrilled as the Christ. That was all. He said, check what is this? by the voice. Check it. Come on. Come on. Yes. Just one. That's what we call mercy. When you look at other people and you are wondering, ah, ah, but these people, have you not seen singers? I, <laughs> I have seen voices. So people that are talented, you know, you see somebody is talented, the talent is end. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, they are just in one corner. Nobody knows they exist. And you see somebody just singing, one mercy just rested upon that life. And someone say, Come, I want to bring you out. And that was all. Are we together? Number three. First Kings 14 and verse 6. First Kings 14 and verse 6. Are we getting blessed today? <laughs> now one time the king Jeroboam was sick for a very long time. And he needed to, to meet the prophet Ahijah for um, a revelation of whether he will recover from his sickness or not. So the Bible says in verse 6 that, and um, verse, verse 5, 6, that he told his wife to this guy because he has offended the prophet. The prophet kept giving him money, but he would not listen. Now he wants to partake of that blessing and grace. So he asked his wife to disguise and go encounter the prophet. And then before he came, God has spoken. Verse 6 said, And the prophet, so when Ahijah heard her footsteps at the door, he called her out. Come in, wife of Jeroboam. <laughs> Why are you pretending to be someone else? Then he told her, I have bad news for you. When you become another, what you experience is bad news. That's my next point. Don't strive to become another. The beauty of the original is in the originality of its beauty. Don't strive to become what another. You have copied him so much, even when he stammers, you stammer. <laughs> be yourself. Be what God has made you to be. Have your own voice. Don't become an echo on the earth. Have your voice. That's the problem we have on the earth. Everybody wants to be somebody else. Once they see something that is very catchy. You see a young man that has five titles. Today, he, he sees he see a five-word ministry. <laughs> That's his name. He sees a prophet in town. And he saw the way the man, you know, come out, call out cases, phone numbers. Then the next day, he tells them to call him prophet. He says, I'm prophet. <laughs> the next week, he sees an apostle in town with a crazy dimension of the teaching grace. Then he changes it. Apostle. <laughs> then the following week, you see an evangelistic with crazy miracles. He say, "Come healing evangelist. The fire is on me. A blaze for God. <laughs> Don't be what another, because what people will still be seeing is that person. Are we together? Don't be another. Be yourself. Don't pretend to be somebody else. Watch. Living a life of deceit is expensive." Living a life, imagine the pressure I'll have put myself on the first year of coming to start ministry, if not for discipline. Maybe by now the ministry will be bankrupt. So you just need a guy like, you know, a very twitch car with four bodyguards, black suit, <laughs> two at the doors, okay, three. So I sit down at the, at the back side. Then while they come to church, they press the on for three minutes. Ah, I've arrived. You know, those kind of people. They should be protecting the people from you. <laughs> you don't need bodyguards. 
because you will kill them. Body just because of that word in discipline. Time to be somebody else without knowing the life that they've arranged for themselves. Be yourself. Talk like the way you do. See, your blessing is in your uniqueness. Be you. You know what is you? Why owe you? Your own uniqueness. Your own uniqueness. Are we together? Be yourself. Let people know you for who you are. Are we together? Don't be another. The beauty of the original is in the originality of its beauty. That's when it's appreciated. Are we together? That's when it's appreciated. Every man you see that is a star or celebrated has his uniqueness. There's something he talks differently from others. He behaves differently. Everything. He has his own what? Uniqueness. Please have your own uniqueness. This copy, copy life would put you into too much what? Trouble. See, look at what I... One time I was reading the scriptures and God said to me, He said, son, why you see certain young men facing some terrible situations in ministry is because they copied another. Every mantle assumes a character. And that's why the Bible says that John the Baptist came in the light passion of what? Elijah. Still wearing what? The um, belt and eating of locusts and what? Honey. So if I see a character like, or I, I see a person like Archbishop Benson that was given to prayer, and I develop my life in that way, his mantle will drop on me. Just like we see for John C. Suleiman. If I see someone like Catherine Coleman, right? How she sings and say, oh, we bless you. And I behave like that. A mantle will fall on me called Benny Hinn because a mantle assumes a character. It carries a specific word, behavior. Now, that's the good part of it. A mantle has a specific wolves and demons. The Bible says that for the hireling, when he sees wolves, he runs. So for every position, there are demons. There are demons attached to position. So by the time I begin to copy and assume a man, possibly even copy his message, Right? And dispense his kind of truths at his height. The demon that faces him at that height will begin to face me. I'm teaching you a deep spiritual mystery. I will begin to encounter his kinds of battle. And possibly I'm not even ready for it. See, have you not seen men that are good with their wives? Okay, family going well. But if I, well, I can pick one of you now, right? And maybe you just get married. You are fine. I put the oil on you. Watch your family in one year. Then you know that positions attract some kind of what? Demons. The oil introduces itself to the kingdom of darkness. Are we together? You, have you not seen homes like that? Immediately the person was just ordained. Check what happened. They didn't tell them that demons <laughs> are attached to positions. They only saw the euphoria and the glory of it. He said, the true shepherd will see the wolves. So wolves come. What did I say come? Wolves. He said, but the iron will run away. He can stand it. There are demons attached to positions. That's why sometimes, even impactation is very, very risky. You give a young man an impactation right now, give him the next one week. You see him struggling with what he could cope with in his life. Why? He has been jacked up to a height to face a demon he was not prepared for. He's walking in new dimensions of the anointing, but cannot believe himself. What's happening to me? <laughs> Are we together? We'll talk about it in the next three years. Number four, be diligent. Work hard. Work hard. What working hard simply means is that you put the work to avoid the hard. You put the work to avoid what? The hard. Work hard. Are we together? The Bible says in Proverbs 10 and verse 4, it says, He that dealeth with a slack hand shall be a poor man. But the diligence shall be rich. He that dealeth with what? A slack hand. Shall be what? A poor man. Anything God has commissioned in your hands, whether it's ministry, academics, fashion, whatever, give it your best. If you give what you do, all it contains, entails, it will give you all it contains. Are we following? Give it all your best. Go the extra mile. I listened to the last IMF conference in Glory Dome. And Bishop Abiyo was speaking there. He said they will keep telling young men, take it easy. He said during our time, we didn't take it easy. We were breaking down month by month. But now we tell you, you know, I told you great men speak differently. So you just take it easy and just love God. You just be doing the little you can do. <laughs> At last. <laughs> you will last. Are we following? The Bible says to everything, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there is time and season. If truly that even government requires that it's still after 60 you have retirement age, why are you retiring now to rest? 
Say, I need early to bed, early to rise. You even rise up. You only do that at different times of your life. There are times where you need to go hard on yourself. Are we following? And there are times where you what? You relax. You know that's how God behaves. So I prove to you. The Bible says, and the day one commanded the light to shine. He did that two, three, four, five, six days. He made man, and the seventh day he what? He rested. That is the investment begins to produce results. He chooses not to do anything anymore. His investment produces the results. Are we together? Please know when to work and when to retire. Right now, you are still young to think of it. Even for professors now, 75. So I wonder what you are retiring from now. Are we together? <laughs> Even in your streets, they call your name, they don't know. They say, so is that boy. And you are retiring. Something should be wrong with you. Are we together? Be willing to work hard. Cut down no sleeps. Go the extra mile. Put in the best you can in whatever you do. This lazy nature and just let's relax. And you know, we just trust God. Just believe God. Remember, the Bible says, with God, all things, not only God, with him, with his two people, conjunction, me and you, all things are possible. The equation has to be complete. Are we following? Join him <laughs> and make it possible. There is no man that has amassed greatness that you can't trace labor around his life. The Bible says, for every labor there is profit. Are we together? Proverbs 12.24. Are we getting blessed? Proverbs 12.24. It said, the fear of the wicked will always come true. So the hopes of what? The diligent. 12.24, sorry. Work hard and become a leader. Be lazy and become what? A slave. Work hard and you will feed nations. Be lazy. You will beg all your life. You beg. You will be saying yes sir, to your mates. You see them coming, you go and hide. I told you we can all graduate as schoolmates, but we'll never end up as life mates because time will separate men into categories. So that after school now, they figure that you. Where are you there now? What you, you did do? <laughs> they are trying to know how productive you have become to your life. They don't even ask you, of course. Even if you can just say you are working with this bank or one shrine, you say, as long as you are doing something, <laughs> you know you are engaged. <laughs> are we together? Proverbs 22, 29. It says, show me a man. It means it has nothing to do with religion. There are success principles, there are divine principles, and there are universal laws. One of the universal laws we have is what? The law of gravity. It, it affects both Muslim, Christian, Jewish, and this kind of principle too. He says, show me a believer, a justified man. Show me a man that is diligent. The Amplified said, and skillful in his business. Such a man will stand before kings and not men. It means over time he will change the quality of people he stands and where he actually stands over time. Are we together? Put hard work into what you are doing. Are we together? Put that let your conscience justifies you that you have truly worked out. See, listen, I'll say this final as I move out of that point. Life sometimes watches us from far as a personality. Looking at what we are doing today to reward us for tomorrow. That's how I feel this life is. It's just watching you. With this one you are doing, come, share your wish. You want to ride Roy Royce. You come You will do toy Roy Royce and be dragging it to the street. That's how I see life. That's how it behaves as if it's a personality. Watching you that you cannot deceive me. I know your inputs. And I'll tell you outputs. Are we together? Please be willing to work, work hard. See, I won't lie to you. There are many times I break down. But I couldn't give you rest on myself. A time is coming for that. Are we following? Because the, the Bible has told us that the, the, to everything there is what? Time and season. But this is not the season to be resting for me. If I rest now, what will I do in retirement? I'll be resting too. <laughs> It's not. I broke down sometimes. My health went down. But I will rest a little bit. So yeah, are you okay now? You have to walk this walk. Go the extra mile. I remember some few months ago when we had a little challenge. I was down in health close to my, my body. And normally I fast stretch. My head was down. I mean down. When, you know when you are down and shaking. I told myself, I said, devil, you either kill me in this thing. My wife was begging me. I said, please, just 14 days. Just 14. I won't eat. <laughs> I won't. 
arranging my own life. Then tomorrow, when you see the socks, I say the guy is lucky. His name is Lucky. <laughs> oh, you say it's because he has grace. You have this grace. That's why. <laughs> Are we together? Number five. Proverbs eleven twenty seven. Are we getting blessed, please? Proverbs eleven twenty seven. We are still talking about what the science of what accomplishment. How to accomplish great feats in life and in God. Be good to people. That's number five. <laughs> be good to people. If you carry the Holy Spirit, don't be evil spirit to other people. Are we following? Yes, be good to people. Don't bring people down. Don't fight people and frustrate them. Be good. The Bible says in Proverbs eleven twenty seven. 27, it said if you search for good, you will find favor. Yes. But if you look for trouble, it will come with trailers. Load for you in life. Good. People do good to you. You tear them down. You bring them down. Just looking for a way to bring a man down. That's your assignment. Be good to people. It will bring you favor. Are we together? Titus 3 and verse 8. Compliment people. Celebrate them. Help them and assist them where necessary. I've had people I helped stabbed me. I told you people's opinion and arrows at you mean nothing to you. It is your reactions to them that leaves an impact on you. People's opinion and arrows towards you mean nothing to you. It is your reactions to them that leaves an impact. The verse now in which of I can know it, I can know it. I will eat. I will eat. Not on your account. I will eat. Are we together? Titus 3 and verse 8. Be good to people. Titus 3 and verse 8. He said, these things I have told you are all true. I want you to insist on them so that everyone who trusts in God will be careful to do good deeds at all times. These things are good and beneficial to you. Do good things at all times. Help people. Assist them. They can open doors of favor for you. See, one good thing about people is people don't easily forget the good you do. Are we following? They don't. The good you do, they don't easily forget. One day it will turn back to you. Be good. Be good. Number six. Like I said, if you claim you have the Holy Spirit, don't be like an what? An evil spirit to people. Is that okay? Don't be like an evil spirit. Yes, we should check what kind of spirit you truly have. Please, love people. Relate with them. Compliment them. Assist people. Help them. Celebrate them. Talk about the achievement. It doesn't reduce who you are. Talk about it. I celebrate what God is doing with you. I love you so much. Is there any way I can render a help or your sister? Don't pull people down. Don't pull people down. It will fight you and your generation. Don't pull people down. Don't. Look at it. The Bible says, I said this last night and I moved to the next point. How that David wrote a letter and gave it to the hands of what? Uzziah. And asked him to take it to what? Joab. Right? And he took the letter to Joab and Joab read the letter and discussed with some few others to take Uzziah to where? The battlefront. The first thing I told you was the problem is he doesn't, nobody likes him. Because if they like him, they will have been able to tell him. In fact, even the men that David asked to go and bring his wife and the plot, they will have was like, something's happening. And that's one of the advantages I enjoy in this life. It's really difficult to do anything and I'm not here. So something's happening. This is this. So the first thing is he had problems with people. So even when they saw his dead, they said, go and die. After all, you are not relevant. Number two was that when they put him to the battle line, the Bible says many of them fell on one man's account because David wanted to pull man that one man. Look at the number of people that died. That's how some of you are. You don't care on who we go with this person I want to bring down. If I spoil this person's reputation, how many people will be affected by it? Your mind is not there. You think you are fighting a man not knowing you are fighting a generation. See, there are men who are not an individual but a nation. Who that if the king wants to get them down from the mountain, he will send a troop of soldiers, not one soldier. Because one can't carry them. Though they look like one walking. <laughs> he will send a troop. Are we following? On one man's account. He had to kill many other. Think about it when you want to bring people down. Think about it when you want to spoil people's image and reputation. Think about it. Consider it. And say for the sake of others that will benefit from this life. 
carry somebody is doing good and you, you carry the person's name to a native doctor, they should kill him. And you know he's the breadwinner, the Akara winner, every winner of his family. <laughs> Many people are there benefiting from that. You don't care. You thought you have killed one man, but you have taken food and laughter off the face of many. Share with, especially in Africa. Extreme death, levels of wickedness. What do you benefit from seeing people in pain? What? Why do you get hacked by somebody's success? Why is your, your happiness becoming somebody's disappearance? It should not be existing again. It gives you joy. Be good to people. Be good to what? To people. Number six. Constantly improve yourself. Become better each day. Become the best in your niche. Be difficult to be replaced or ignored. Polish yourself so much. Even your gift. I told you there are four things you do with your gift or five rather. Number one is that you, you discover it. Number two, you what? You develop it. Number three, you what? You distinguish it. Make it look different. Are we following? And finally, you deal wisely with it. Joseph said, I will tell you the meaning of this dream. But if it is better for you, <laughs> remember me. <laughs> you deal wisely with your gifts. So that you don't become a talented poor man. All right? We'll talk about that. I have a book on that. But it's not out. So one constant proof of life is what? Growth. Make sure each day you are becoming better. I told you how sometimes I measure myself. When I get home, I begin to think, what did I achieve today? What addition come, came into my life? If there's nothing, I carry a book and must read before I sleep. Even if it's one page, then I say, hey, at least I read something new today. That's how much you can be so disciplined to your growth. Are we together? Become better. Become better in any area of your niche. The question is this. What one thing? Let's not go to find the whole nation. In this environment, if people think about it, think of your name. When you say healing, there are names that come to your mind. When you say great footballers, you know the two goats you will call. <laughs> right? What one thing will come to the mind of people when they think of your name? And say, we are looking for who can take a seminar on this thing. Oh, this person is. That was the secret of David. They just made a recommendation. Mr. Saul, you need somebody like this that can play and call him. So I know a man in the house of where? Jesse. How speedy with your name come to mind of others. How speedy. Tell us how much you are getting what? Better. You understand that? Become what? Valuable. Because the world will pay you for the amount of value you are ready to bring to what? The table. I said to us, and I'll keep saying it, I choose not to bring anything to the table. I want to bring the table itself. <laughs> So you can bring the value to the table, you bring the table itself. Is that okay? Add value to yourself. Add value to yourself. That even if people did not see you, they will miss you. Add value. If in any way you find yourself, be valuable. You did not come to church, nobody will ask. She was not, they would, eh, you have not been around for two months. I didn't know. Because you have contributed nothing. There's no value you are rendering there. Please don't live your life like that. Is that okay? Force yourself, even when they choose not to give you work, give yourself one. Force yourself. Add beauty to your life. Number seven, take responsibility. Proof of adulthood is responsibility. Not your increase in age, but there are still 40 years old men or 40 years old, uh, 10 years old boys in 40 years old men. Have you not met people that when they talk, you look at their age, you look at them, you're surprised. You are disappointed on their behalf. There are still 10 years old girls in 40 years old ladies. 10 years old girls, nothing is in the head. Nothing. There are two things that makes a lady outstanding. Are we following? Two things that makes her outstanding. Constantly improve. Take responsibility. The proof of adulthood is what? Responsibility. Judges chapter 12 and verse 3. The Bible talks about a man called Jephthah who was a prostitute. He was given back to outside of wedlock. And so when it was time for inheritance, the brothers drove him away. The Bible says in Judges 12, 3. Look at what he said there. He said, and when they drove me, I took my destiny in my hand. I took what? My destiny in my hand. He became responsible for himself. Responsibility is that you take, you don't blame others for your failure. It's just possibly, and you are solely taking all um, the full blame for the outcome of what? Your life. That's responsibility. So number one, be responsible for your life. Be responsible for your life. Because some of you have not been able to lead yourself. And yet you have girlfriend. You know, before we think of corporate leadership, that's what we call self-management and self-leadership. You should be able to lead yourself. That when you wake up from the bed, you put back the bed sheets well. Arrange it and fold your blanket. 
As a man, you are almost 25 now. You don't do it. You're having a girlfriend. <laughs> you marry now. The same thing, you don't wake up like that in the morning. <laughs> Your devotion is a struggle now. Now. You can't, you sometimes pass eight. And you will shout for your friend. Now your lecture, I need to go now. The man will cancel, I go cancel. Papa, don't pray, go cancel. <laughs> <laughs> and you want to marry. Is your children now waiting? Daddy, it's time for devotion. <laughs> is that, daddy, daddy, wake up, it's time. You should be able to lead yourself first before you can lead another. You should be able to give clear directions to your life before you can direct a family. Take responsibility first for your what? Life. That's the first thing you take responsibility for your life. What your life is becoming, take responsibility for it. I say it's my full responsibility, whatever, because not Buhari. There are people that were robbing before Buhari is president. So I'm robbing, it's not because Buhari is now president. They chose to. It's a choice. Take responsibility for your actions. For your actions. Every action you do, take responsibility for it. Don't say the reason is because if not that, if not that, no. I take full responsibility. That's the sign of adulthood. Are we together? You mistakenly, you, you, you know, it's not a mistake. You intentionally got angry. I don't say you mistakenly get angry. Like I saw one yesterday on, online. I don't know how. I think for toothpaste. I don't know if you saw that story. In a photo, the, the girl went to the guy's right. Whether they were dating before or not, I don't know. And knocked. The girl, guy was with another girl inside the room. And so she knocked that she gave her toothpaste. And the guy delayed. And no, she was insulting. Later he opened the door and gave her toothpaste. His own toothpaste. Then when he was done with what he was doing with the other girl, he went to her place and was complaining to her. Why will you embarrass me? Why would you do this? Girl, we pour your total. That's how she carried her and faced his um, this thing. And pour it in that position. <laughs> and they have arrested the two of them. <laughs> when you ask Anna, it's because I'm angry. No, you can control your anger. Take responsibility for your action. You slap you, you and this person was she just said something, you give him a slap. You say, No, it's because of what you said. Say, I'm sorry. I slapped you. I shouldn't have done. Don't stop looking for it. it's because of there was no reason. Somebody will have still be there and not slap the person, even with that same statement. See, this is what makes you better. Or are we following? And this is what makes you change those habits. Say it's because of what the way you were saying it. That was what made me got angry. Say, I'm sorry I took offense on what you said. I'm sorry. Are we following now? Start taking these things from very early in life. As yes, your husband or wife will suffer in your hand. Take responsibilities for your growth. Are we following? Take responsibilities for your growth. So I'm going to read this and improve myself. I'm going to make sure I know this and know this. I will do this and do this. Take responsibility for your growth. Take responsibility for your family. Take re- Some of you are in this campus now. You came here since when did you resume? September, right? You have not called any of your siblings. You will be a bad husband or a bad wife. I'm teaching sometimes for my pains because some of us are suffering on it now. So when I'm in that river, I'll cross it. You can only be confident to cross a river you have built a bridge before time. It's not by faith in it. You don't cross river by faith, though. Except you want to walk on water. <laughs> are we together? You must have built a bridge. That is what giving you the confidence to say such kind of confession. Call once in a month. How are you doing? That's what is showing that you are responsible. So if you'll be a father now, your child will be in school six months. You won't call. You won't call. Because you never had it as a, an habit. Call your parents. Dad, I just called to see her. Send a message. Happy new month, daddy. Happy new month, mommy. They will not tell you, but it means much to them. And it's, some of them will even be surprised when they see the first time you do it. <laughs> you just say, ah, ah, really? <laughs> like I told one of my daughter one time. I said, today's your dad's birthday. He said, yes. I said, send the message. He said, ah, ah. <laughs> I said, really? I said, he will not send it. I said, send it. Let him tell you, God bless you. It's okay. <laughs> Start learning these things. Are we together? Please, I beg you, start learning them now. It makes you take responsibilities on how to look after what another. Nobody, I'm not saying send them money if you don't have, but just the phone call. I just called to say hi. How are you doing? Hope you are fine. How is school there? Has everything over with you? It's so shocking that people have siblings. And they are still in depression. You know, we have people as they call me, I cancel on depression. I used to see posts on people that I cancel on depression. If you have a problem, call me. The first thing we should be dealing with is family values. The Bible says, Should I show you the scriptures? Can I trace it now? Test that scripture for me. It says he has kept the solitary in families. Psalms, the solitary in families. Psalm 68, verse what? Verse 6, read it for me, please. 
He seated the solitary in families. Uh-huh. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. Did you see how he does that? With family community. That's what the church is all about. You can serve God in your room. But it brings what? That family spirit. He sets them. He does it intentionally. Intentionally. That's his system. Are we together? But when you have not spoken to your siblings, two years, there's no talking relationship, they are now wondering. Now that you're in depression, how do you tell them? Please take responsibility for family. Take responsibility for your finance. Learn all the things you need to learn about money. Learn everything. Anointing with that money will become annoyance. You'll be angry at the way they are playing keyboard. But you have not chopped as pastor. <laughs> the way all shasta is, I warn you in the name of the Lord. Don't stop. Because <laughs> <laughs> pastor is hungry. <laughs> Your marriage will be so bitter without money. It will be so bitter without money. I told you I learned something in Proverbs. The Bible says, He that giveth a, a, a gift in secret pacifies hunger. So I started using it for my wife. When I've done anything she's angry, I just send her alert, then I call. Because I know if I call, she'll start to emotionally complain. So once I'll send the alert, do you see my alert? Say, you just be doing like this. And this. <laughs> but I saw it in Proverbs. <laughs> Say a, a, a gift in secret pacifies what? Anger. Read it, you see there. <laughs> you send it to close the mouth. <laughs> because if there is no there is no money, there is no honey. Mm. You understand? <laughs> what you have left is B. To be, to be stingy. <laughs> the biggest problem of all families, I counsel families a lot. 90% of family, the biggest problem is finance. You see a man reacting strangely just because he can't afford it. Say, why will you ask, when did you finish toothpaste? Why you people are pouring it too much? <laughs> <laughs> Have you not seen those kind of Yeah, there's a way you are pouring it too much. <laughs> I remember one time, my dad, about two years ago, he retired, so the money was not coming as usual. So I went home, he was now complaining to me. That his father, he started off this gas, he must go and buy firewood. <laughs> so, that this children must start using firewood. They are wasting gas. I said, Daddy, sorry. <laughs> Have you ever gone to the kitchen? I just saw them on gas and it was filled. <laughs> it's not food. They are using it to cook. <laughs> so I knew the money is not coming like before again. Okay? <laughs> so things were changing. Are we together? Please take responsibility for your finance. Is that okay? We'll talk about that. We'll have the part two series of the signs of accomplishment. One of the ten you must accomplish financial stability. We'll talk about that next week. Part two. We'll deal more with finance. Is that okay? Take responsibility for your dressing. You are poor, you are not mad. <laughs> are we following? You are poor, you are not what? You are not mad. Please dress well. Dress like a winner every day. You come and dress. Put your clothes and arrange it well. Put your shoes and bounce. Like there's a million dollars in your account. Is that okay? Dress like where you want to go. I told you, don't wear your experiences on your face. Wear your expectations. Dress like where you want to go. Look like where you anticipate. Are we together? Take responsibility for that. See, so the problem is God is not buying me clothes. It's only one. And But that one, you have to wash it now. See, now you wash your box. And people are wondering, did you buy any box in those there? <laughs> Called the color. <laughs> <laughs> what has happened? Uh, br- brothers, you are with me, right? <laughs> You know, I stayed in the hostel, I know the life. <laughs> you will see someone like, oh boy, this thing new. <laughs> it's the same box as well. Are we together? Take responsibility for how you are perceived by others. Take responsibility for how you are perceived by what? By others. Sometimes it's not the operation of the spirit of rejection. It's the way we live our life that makes us rejected. You are quarrelsome, you are always frowning, you have a wrong spirit. And you're angry why people are not liking you. Will you like yourself? Are we together? Please take responsibilities for how you are perceived by what? By others. It's your job. How do you want people to read you and know you? Even Jesus asked, who do men say that I am? So sometimes ask yourself. It's a good question. Every day as I walk, how do people see? How do they perceive me as a troublesome person? A noisemaker. When they just say, he has to come, he's around, he's there. The Bible is speaking in John chapter 4, is it 4, 5, 35? It says, and of John, he was a burning and a shining light. Men could see the brightness of his appearance and they could feel the heat of his existence. He was a shining and a burning light. Are we following? It's your job to do that. Take responsibility for your environment. Some of you dress very nice, but when they go to where you live, you think it's a poetry house. Are we together? Take responsibility for your environment. Keep it clean. Keep it nice. Keep it serene. 
I told you sometimes the operation of demonic oppression is the function of dirtiness. It's not because of uh, maybe there is an attack from your village. It might be dirtiness. One time, one of my friends was being oppressed at night. They press him. Every night he's sleeping, they will begin to press him. So we kept praying for his deliverance, but he refused to be delivered. So one day, we we're praying, and I picked from the spiritual area. I said, come. It's like you need to clean your room more. You know, it's why all these spiritual brothers, how we behave. When you go to your room, just to prove to people that come around that you read, you keep all the books like this around. That's a sign you don't even read. Because book you have read and valued it, you won't keep it like that. So everywhere will be dirty. And that was giving room for demonic world oppression. Have you found that, that in every place, deaths are gathered in an area? Anytime they want to come and pack them, you see those trailers breaking down. Because those places get occupied by what? Demonic spirits. That's why they are called unclean spirits. Unclean spirits. So, dirtiness can bring for the oppression of demonics. That's one thing I always check in my environment. Make sure everyone is intact. So, that one is taken care of. I can know this one is truly spiritual. <coughs> are we following, please? I told you how sometimes I want to pray. We're praying in the house one time. I woke up doing our devotion. I stopped everybody and said, go and clean everywhere. The Holy Ghost said, he's not hearing anything. Well, that's one thing I, I can be very sensitive. I said, everybody, stop this devotion. Let's not waste our time and do tradition. The Holy Ghost is not hearing us. Everybody go and clean. Arrange, put things in the right proportion. Is that okay? Please, take responsibility for that. Take responsibility for your health. For your health. I was listening to a great man of God about three days ago. And he was teaching a deep secret in a minister conference. And he said something that struck my heart. That's the power of reading too. The first thing we talked about. He said, he was being asked a question. With your busy schedules and the way you put so much energy in your preaching, how do you keep your health intact? And he laughed. Because sometimes he's on fasting, 60 days, 70 days, 40 days, and the rest of them. He said, don't let any man of God deceive you that they don't take drugs. They won't call it drugs, but it's actually drugs. What they take is supplements. All of them. You know, we won't call supplement drug. All these things they just sell, they tell you supplements, that is vitamins, this and that. We know these ones are not drugs. They take supplements. Take response. Now you want to copy. I remember a young man in this campus that they called me to come and pray for because of malaria. I said, go to your clinic. He said, no, 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 no. I can't take drugs. They carried him like this road. <laughs> <laughs> On this road. <laughs> look, at, look at this boy. <laughs> Something you'll have only go. Nobody will have you seen you. <laughs> Now, these are the carrying you a stretcher because you are no longer the one living. It's Christ living to you now. <laughs> are we together? Please, please. In those days, there is something called the, the balm of Gilead. The garden of Gilead was not only anointing. Are we following? It was a produce from a plant. Go read. That was what was available to them in those days. And in our days, God has given men wisdom to even produce these things in drugs. Are we saying you should be caged with that kind of life? No, but if you are sick after you have prayed, I are not getting better. Take drugs. Is not what a sin. Please, so you're not going to die. Oh. <laughs> As you are pressing, you know, into that utmost level of the divine, like here you don't force it. All right? Please, be helping yourself. Is that okay? Be helping yourself. All right. Number eight, the eight signs of accomplishment. Master the art of delayed gratification. Master the art of delayed gratification. How that um, Pastor Matthew Ashmolo was saying how he bought lands at very cheap cheap prizes in Moe, right, or something like that in those days. When young man start life at that point in time, he wants to ride a very big car. Are we together? Take the time to build. Master the heart of delayed gratification. You don't have a landed property, you carry the land on your head that is born straight on your head. A land on your head. And you comfortably move. And you don't feel sad. Now, how painful it is, there's nothing even inside the brain. That it's painful. Are we together? Please! I don't have what to eat and the rest of it. And the unlucky, unfortunate incident for him was I now sighted his phone. So I checked my own. I, <laughs> I said, young man, you see the onion, the onion in your iPhone. Go and boil it. Start from there. And because even God will stop my finance if I help unproductive people. The Bible says in Thessalonians, first, it says, he that does not work should not eat. So if I break that divine principle, he will block my finance because I'm helping an unproductive man. I'm teaching you, that's why some of your parents, they help people to a point they are poor now. All that they are living in now is anger. We do I help them. We do I help them. We help you stupid people. And God will not keep giving you money to sponsor stupidity. Because some of them, he's putting them under a process, but you, buy, you stop the process. God wanted to train them to be financially prudent. You now became the Messiah. You wanted to prove your eyes shall die. You will die. <laughs> Continue. Are we together? I learned these things to the bitter way. Take 
time to build your life. Don't be in a, you are not in a competition with anybody but yourself. Are we following? That yourself tell you you cannot make it. Say, I will do it. I will prove to you that I can. That's the only competition you have. Take time. Don't let anything disturb you. Some of the people putting you under pressure are alone. Alone. I told you a story yesterday in School of Leadership. How a big man was talking to me. And I was wondering he could not bring 1,000 naira out. He was complaining when we were all complaining. That is noisy. I looked. I was confused. He said, my brother, you are surprised at me. <laughs> he said, most of us, you are saying, we are living on loan. He said, I can have 100 million in my account, but I'm having a loan of 200 million. So I'm servicing. Even Nigeria is living on loan. We are servicing loan. <laughs> so when you see budget now, say the budget for this year is 3 trillion. And our loan is almost 50 something trillion. Who oh, Nigeria behaves that way? Are we together? Please don't kill yourself. Don't put yourself on down. Do what? Grow at the pace of your life. From one level to another. I made a vow very early in life. I cannot ride a car without a landed property. I don't. Why? Something I'll now be giving mechanic money every time. Put structures and systems in place. Now you bought car, you're packing it now, got no money for where. Even shame is catching you nicer compound. So guy, you don't carry your car today. <laughs> you can't fuel it now. Why? You didn't take time to work. God, your life. Are we together? Please master that. I told you delay gratification is um, sacrificing the immediate for the ultimate. Sacrificing a short-term appetite for a long-term gain. Are we following? Sacrificing it, a short-term appetite for a long-term gain. Because some of those that are having TVs today that you don't have, we watch you tomorrow. That's if they have money to subscribe. Don't disturb yourself. See, if you see the kind of his TV, something is to roll inside. Don't worry. They will watch you tomorrow. Are we together? Please, don't be under any form of pressure. See, I've told you, I've learned this thing very early in life. Human beings can never be impressed. So I want to impress somebody. Then you went and put yourself under pressure and bought something, one million naira. I give them one day. Ah, you are using iPhone. Oh, wonderful. I'm telling you, the next day they don't even know you're holding a phone. Is that not so? You just disturbed yourself unnecessarily. Please, I beg you. Except they give you as a gift. You're using it for one million and you have sat under me. I don't give my angel assignment on your behalf. <laughs> Please put things on ground. People take time to build wealth before they make noise. Are we together? What they make, they don't have, they have what we call streams of income. Not <laughs> you know, I told you there is source of income, there are streams of income. My uncle is a source of income, but not a stream, because he can only give me once in a black moon. But a stream of income means it's a continuous flow. It comes. So understand the difference between a source of income and a stream of income. Build wealth. Is that okay? Please. <laughs> Number nine. I have about 25 points. I'll stop now because time is against us. We'll continue next week. Is that okay, Bios? But we're blessed today. I wish sure we got challenged by the word. We are young people, and that's why God is bringing this word to us. You can look into them and see where you need to begin to take steps in your life and address them. All right? Address them. Number nine, network with others. Build your influence. Network with others. Build your influence. Reach out to others with a hand of fellowship. Proverbs 18 and verse 24. He said, he that wants friends must first show himself Friendly. Go to people and say, I had so much God is doing with you. I celebrate you. I just wanted to pay you a visit and just celebrate God's work in your life. Build influence with people. Are we following? Network. Your network is your net worth. Your link is your lot. Sometimes all that matters in life becomes who you know. And that's the truth. That's the way the world is going to now. Relationship currency. Who you know. That can make one or two calls for you. And do so. I've seen, that, you know, I told you how when I do a business, and this ED, is it there? People call that thing like you want to do a class and wait, you get certificate. So I thought of it, my wife made it. I thought of it, I said, Must you do it? She was surprised. I said, You must not. This is Nigeria. Think of a call, make a call. And got the certificate in 24 hours. Just call, pa, 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 make this call. Oh, you need it? Oh, don't probably I'll send it. That's how this life works. If I was so easy, I thought I'd do my own. <laughs> that is plenty to do for me. Are we together? So sometimes I just wonder, I say, Wow, if you don't know people now. Are we together? You're finished. One of the biggest advantage you can have now is your network. Don't be quarreling with everybody. Please make friends. Say, I'm an introvert. Your life will be introverted. It's not a calling. Is that okay? Stop making it look like a calling as if it's a seat for ministry. Some of you brag with so much stupidity. Say, I'm an introvert. Just stay quiet. At last. <laughs> Because the truth about it is that even in class, it is only the names of noise makers that are noted. <laughs> wow. And that's how the world is now. You want to be you want to be you want to have fame faster? Make noise. Is that also? 
go online, make noise. There's a lady that I don't know in YouTube. I just mistakenly saw one day popped up on my video. She used to talk rubbish. Say, I'm just found one black, slim, so funny girl looking terrible. The day I saw subscribe, I went back to our own channel. I said, God, <laughs> how do they do these things? And we used to just make noise. They will note you. I'm teaching you a secret to business. Make noise. Only noise makers are what? Not dead. It's a business skill. Be your influence, invest in your relationships. Is that okay? Invest in what? Your relationships. Invest in them. You have people you know, sometimes get them a gift. Not only when you need their help, you just carry a phone. Can I, can you help me? Can you help me? Invest in them. Invest. You're in ministry. Sometimes they invite you to preach on their pulpit. Return back the honorarium. I say, I saw it back into your work. It will open a permanent door for you. And this one is not after money. I will only be inviting you. I'm teaching you some skills on how to manage platforms. Are we together? Please. Number 10, finally, let's stop at this. Fight all forms of distractions. Fight all forms of what? Distractions. Focus is the womb of accomplishment in life. Focus is the womb of what? Accomplishments. And I want to focus, follow one course until success. Follow one course until what? Even Jesus said to matter, but one thing is needful. One thing is... See, nothing scatters the life of a man like distraction. The Bible is speaking in James chapter 1, 6 to 7. It says, such a double-minded man, let him not think that he can what? Receive anything. Only stable people are planted. Imagine you carry a tree. From one point, will it have time to grow? That's what some of you do to your life. That's what you do. It's a secret. Trace every great man you know. Trace the pattern. It doesn't work. Fight distractions with passion. Fight it. Hate it. Sometimes my children know me. That's why it is very difficult for me to be addicted to anything. Very difficult. The first time I tried Instagram, I said, let me log into Instagram and open a page. So I told myself, I want to post one post. I finished Instagram after eight hours. Then I vowed, you will never see me again. That's the last time they saw me on Instagram. I'm sure even Magzubaba is missing. <laughs> the addiction was too much. I was in Facebook. So let me try that one. Before you know, I said, Papa, my girl, Alpha. She fine. Papa, I stand on your life. Fine. Papa. I said, Zugaba, you won't see me. <laughs> Fight distractions with passion. I can give all excuse. And so the reason why I'm online is because I wanted to post for eight hours. You were posting one post to eight hours. So you see how you lie. Are we together? That's why many of us lack inspiration. Because you have no time where you sat down and your mind was relaxed enough to think. Just go to Susan Garden, sit there, and know, play music and just be thinking about life. And see the kind of inspiration you will draw from your inside. I told you that's the secret of the great. You pray on the prayer and pray. The Bible says, and God said, let there be light. The word light there in the original Greek is not the appearance of this brightness you are seeing. No, because later he created light. Remember, that word light there was ideas. They were hanging on the air. So when you pray, when we pray, blah, 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 we open those portals. Then somebody like Mark Zuckerberg will go to a place of the gate and stay in an hotel for five hours just to think and then travel there. That's why the Bible says, when you meditate, you will make thy way to stress. That's the principle they know. They trap them. And they just, oh, let me do this. You, even your prayer, you will still distract them. That's what you're just doing. You are not, you are not just nothing. You are just happy. You are shouting. Nothing. Your mind is not even in what you are praying. That's why sometimes, remember when we were praying some few nights during the long break? I stopped them intervally. I said, In Jesus' name, we pray, man. What's the prayer point? Come on, here, revelation. <laughs> then I was shocked. What are you now praying this? That you don't even know prayer for. If you see what they were saying, you not believe yourself. <laughs> Say, please, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. <laughs> what prayer point are you even praying? <laughs> God. <laughs> I couldn't believe my ears. <laughs> <laughs> but if you see the way they were saying, Para for the morning, they forgot to pray. That's why most times, even in church, we tell them, leave it on the projector. So by the time their spirits come back, they will still see the prayer point. <laughs> And continue from there again. <laughs> Are we together? Fight every form of what? Distraction. Please. The Bible says, In stillness shall thy strength be made known. There is something about in stillness. 
shall thy strength. I don't want to touch the human deity, so I don't bring out some. But in stillness shall thy strength be made known. In stillness. When you learn to quiet your spirit even in the midst of noise, and you can hear, please fight distractions. Fight it. There are some things you just have to sacrifice for success. I don't think there's any of you that watched football the way I did. I told you they drove me out of my house as a growing up child because of football. You Knowing your dad warned you and said, I'm tired. I am warning you now as I'm going to work. <laughs> if I hear it by mistake that you went and play ball, you are finished. And that the, the street has, you know, this, it has street match. <laughs> and I said with my mouth, Yes, sir. But immediately left an inspiration of the Holy One. Came on me. <laughs> and I did some calculations. If you will come back by 4 p.m. from work, I can round up with first half. Around like 1.32. Then I'll be back home. So I was inspired. By the time I finished and came back home, I was holding the key to the door, but the door was open. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew. <laughs> How have you had that experience when growing up? That, that day, you see. <laughs> You don't know what brought your parents from work. <laughs> I knew <laughs> that today there's an interest. <laughs> the rest is stories. We will not talk about them. Are we together? But when it, I knew the ministry call is on me and I have to, I have to sacrifice that. I can't give that my attention again. Because the rule is that I'm supposed to give more priority and time and wisdom to the area of my words calling and assignment. That's why you don't see me on the speech. Not because I don't like sport, but I know I can never do professional again. My time has expired. So if you are gone, you broke left me. You are okay. <laughs> Even to play for Mina, boys, you will not play for every two boys, but you have broken leg. It's like break leg like that is not your purpose. Yeah. Then you know that that one will pay you tomorrow for breaking leg. But this one is just pure leisure. Fight distractions at all costs. What you need to cut down on, cut down on it. Are we following? Sometimes you know it. People is, is going to disturb you. Look for a place they will not see you. Are we following? Look for. You know, the problem with humans and young people is that we are not serious. We won't want to change. Any change that will not require a change from you will not bring up about any change. Do you understand? Any change that will not require a change from you will not bring about what? Any change. It will require that you to change something. As you are having your to-do list, have your not-to-do list. For John the Baptist, the Bible says, he was not that light. That was the first thing. The things he was not. If he can reduce them, then he will know what he is. Mm -hmm. Know very early what you are not, what you are not called to do. This Don't distract yourself. He was not that light. He was just a voice. Are we together? Please, I beg us in God specially. Are we blessed today? Yes, can we rise up now? Thank you for listening. We trust you have been blessed. You can stay empowered by connecting to us on Facebook at Grace Realm Ministries International, Instagram at Grace Realm Global, and Telegram at Grace Realm Channel. You can follow us on our online radio at www.forward/mixlr.com forward slash Grace Realm. You can also contact the following helplines. 0812-2477-859 or 0813-038-3116.